Okay, let's start with just a brief uh, intro on units and significant figures, uh, because units, I'm, I'm learning, are more and more important, more and more helpful uh, to engineering problems um, than, than I realized, right? Uh, it's helpful to keep up with your units throughout the problem, uh, because you know that the units must be homogeneous, right? Units must be homogeneous. What does homogeneous mean? Same throughout. Same throughout your problem. Uh, same units on the left hand side of your equation and the right hand side of your equation. Uh, the same units uh, for every term. The main thing, just be consistent. Be consistent. And so if you, have, if, you, if you have an equation where you're adding things together, this has to have the same units as this. It has to have the same units as this. In order to add them together, they have to have the same units. In order for the left-hand side, uh, has to have the same units as the right-hand side. Uh, that will help you re notice uh, when you make mistakes. Notice when you maybe forget to square that or something. So kind of uh, look down here. Um, units can help if you're unsure of the equation. Sometimes you're like, okay, hey, I'm given meters, I'm given seconds here, you know, I'm given a, a velocity here. How can I make sure those units work? Uh, this one right here, it can help you point out errors. Uh, need to be able to convert units easily. Uh, this equation up here, Sorry, this equation up here uh, is an equation we will use in dynamics. Um, and it doesn't look, does it look like these have the same units? Here are the, same, here are the units for each of these. Uh, those are all the same units. Uh, so, but we have to know a lot of things about units. One, a couple of hints here. Uh, we need to know that a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. A Newton is the same thing as a kilogram meter per second squared. That's why you see this Newton times meters is the same as you see. Look at this one right here. That right there is a Newton times meter. Also, another thing that's going to be helpful throughout the semester, uh, radians are a measure of angle, uh, but they are kind of dimensionless dimensionless units. Uh, the radians just say kind of a ratio uh, of the, you know, circumference to diameter uh, of a circle if you're looking at um, um, angles going around. Uh, anyway, that's why this one over here, the Newton meter times the radians, the same units as Newton meters. There's a lot with that in uh, dynamics. Okay, how do you convert units? You can convert them however you want to, but this is how I like to convert them. If, if I wanted to convert, if I wanted to change 6 RPMs, 6 RPMs is a revolution per minute. If I wanted to convert that to radians per second, here's how I do it. 6 revolutions per minute. Uh, I want to convert revolutions to radians, uh, and so I just think, okay, how many revolutions are equal to a radian? I can multiply it times any, a fraction that is equal to one. What fraction that is equal to one has revolutions on the bottom, radians on the top? Well, I know that one revolution is equal to two pi radians, right? So that way I'm multiplying it times a fraction equal to one. I can cross out those revolutions. Now I have radians, but I also want uh, per second, not per um, minute. So I want to get rid of this minute, so let me put this in the numerator and seconds in the denominator. Uh, let's see, did, 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 one minute, 60 seconds. And that, that is how I convert my units is by multiplying it times fractions that are equal to one in order to cancel out the units that I don't want and leave the units that I do want. Then just multiply those across, 0.628 uh, radians per Second, um, everyone, hopefully you know that one revolution is two pi radians or 360 degrees, right? All the way around the circle. So that's what I want you to know about units. Keep up with your units. Units are important. <clears throat> now, a quick notice to Nick of Figures. 
I am not huge on the importance of significant figures, uh, but let's talk about them. Significant figures is, is how many, not, not exactly how many decimal places, but how many significant figures. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to reteach significant figures. I think you know that. Um, but significant figures indicate the precision of our measurements. Using too many is misleading. Um, and it can be costly if you are giving, you know, some uh, drawings to a machinist and you have all these, you know, labeled to three, four, five, six decimal places, they're going to have to be precise and machine it to be that accurate um, when, you know, is it, is it really necessary? Um, using too few significant figures uh, can be can um, make your numbers off by, you know, it depends on, uh, on your values, but uh, just using two as opposed to three could be off by 4%. Um, so it kind of gives you wrong answers if you use too few significant figures. This is my rule of thumb. My rule of thumb is don't worry about rules. I think you, you've learned in school all the rules of significant figures uh, because the way that I learned it, um, if, if I said, hey, this force is 100 newtons, uh, that's technically only one significant figure, and I don't want your answer as one significant figure because uh, I'm going to give you, a lot of times I'm going to give, give us forces, uh, that's 800 newtons, you know, that might technically have one significant figure, but I don't want your um, answer as only one significant figure. Uh, go ahead and give me uh, four to five significant figures throughout the problem uh, and three to four significant figures on your final answer. So that's just my rule of thumb is I know other teachers and other classes are a lot more strict with significant figures, and I'm not. So for my class, give me four or five significant figures, three or four on your final answer. Here's when I start taking off. Here's when I start taking off. If you say that one third is 0.33, no, no, no. At least give me another 0.33, three or four, right? And maybe if you're just in your calculator, just go ahead and pl plug one third in your calculator. Um, here's a big one uh, for me two thirds. First of all, it's definitely not 0.66. You should have rounded it to 0.67. Uh, but give me a few more significant figures. Um, so that's the only time I start counting off, when you only give me two uh, for something that should have uh, three or four significant figures.